Hi everyone, it's another CES, CES 2016. My name is Darcy Lacave. We're here with Android Authority. We're here at the ARM booth, and I'm here with Mr. James Bruce, who is the director of mobile for ARM. It's great to speak to you again, Darcy. It's wonderful always seeing you at CES, MWC, <laughs> and um, thank you very so, much. It's uh, my pleasure, sir. Mm. So it was another banner year for ARM. I think last time we spoke, we were dealing with uh, 50 billion ship connected devices. That's right. And now it's up to 75 billion. So 75. What, that's right. So what's really interesting is in the last uh, two years, our silicon partners have shipped 25 billion um, SOCs. Now, of course, this goes into all the great uh, smartphones that you see, the devices that you're connecting to your mm -hmm. smartphones, but also into a lot of products that you don't even think about. I mean, for example, the camera that's actually recording us, yeah. that's got an ARM processor yeah, in it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And if you just look at... Um, things like your car, there's just so many ARM processors in there. In your opinion, I mean, you, you've been doing this a long time, mm -hmm. a lot longer than me. <laughs> you've seen a lot of change, but where do you feel the greatest innovation came from? What sectors, what partners uh, in 2015? Oh, that's a very good question. And I mean, really, I think if you just sort of step back about it, okay. I think great innovation happens when consumers stop thinking of something as technology and mm -hmm. it's just a product that they use. It's just totally invisible. I think it's great, um, and I think if you look, you know, if you look at some of the products in 2015 that I've really liked, um, it can be all the way from my sort of arm-powered cycle computer that I bought, um, through to the sort of latest and greatest smartphones that I've had a chance to sort of uh, use this year, and then there's just, um, should we say, boring stuff but still important, such as my new wireless router, yeah. you know, it's just all of those things. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. I mean, uh, we just got went hands-on with uh, the Low TV uh, mm. Max mm. Pro, and uh, it's the world's first device that's going to ship with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 820. Mm. And the benchmarks they were talking about were, I mean, I know benchmarks, but they were north of 130,000, which is the highest number I've ever heard possible. Mm. But I was really intrigued uh, by so many companies, you know, in 2015. You know, it's uh, incredible innovation, and... We're just seeing so many high-caliber smartphones launch at ever-aggressive price points. Mm. 199 essentially now can get you a flagship experience. Yeah, that's, that's right. And I think that's the really nice thing about the smartphone market now is that there's great smartphones at mm. any price point. And from the perspective of a consumer, you really should choose what's right for you. Now, for mm. someone like myself, it's a premium smartphone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for example, you know, something like the TV or the uh, Mate 8. Yeah. Great phones, but for example, if I'm spending my hard-earned cash and I'm buying my son a smartphone, I'm going to buy at the most two hundred dollars because he's going to break it. He will. Yeah. He will. <laughs> um, and so let's talk about the A72, A53 uh, chipset that's in the Mate 8. It's the mm -hmm. world's first. So to, just just offer us a bit of an overview. All right. So basically, if you look at the Kirin 950 in there, we've got the Cortex A72. Yes. And um, the A72 has delivered a, a significant increase in performance and efficiency over the A57. Mm -hmm. And what that really means is, from the user's perspective, is that they can get higher performance and better battery life. Um, also combined with the A53, mm -hmm. that gives you the big little, so you've got those exactly. little calls there to do More the sort of small task. And what I'm seeing is, for example, on the Mate 8 that I've been using for the last couple of days, is I'm getting stunning battery life. How stunning? Um, almost unrealistically stunning. Two and what, uh, Well, I mean, a simple proof point is, um, you know, traditionally at CES, we all carry around battery packs. You need one. <laughs> That's right. It's, just, it's the dirty secret in the mobile industry. <laughs> it is. Um, and um, the other day when I got back from um, back to the room at one o'clock in the morning, it was a good excuse, it was uh, 30th birthday, obviously not mine, nice. um, the battery life uh, was still at 68%. Are you kidding? So it managed to do a whole day at CES wow. and only use 33%. That's incredible. Yeah. I know my uh, LG G4, I, I need to have at least 4,000 extra milliamps That's on right. me exactly. just to keep it yeah. topped up. And, you know, it's... Yeah, it's just a sad reality we yeah. face. We're all very hooked. But mm. I, in Huawei, what they did with the, the Mate 7, it also had stunning battery life. Mm. And having visited the company many times, I know that they come from a solid engineering background. Yeah, That's what pretty much most of the people there do. So, and also the 20 uh, global bands that it possesses. I think that's the most on any phone I've ever heard. Absolutely, and it's, yeah. it's great, especially if you live in the US where there's just so many different LT bands, having yeah. the ability to guess a great phone like the Mate 8, mm. 
uh, use it in the LT in the US and then go to Asia, go to Europe, exactly. and you got the LT support. I know. And so I spent some time with uh, Samsung Foundry mm -hmm. and their memory people and their oh. people because I'm, uh, I'm a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they were talking that, saying that they're ready to have 10 nanometer SOCs produced by the end of 2016. Uh, so what are we looking at from going from, remember at MWC it was the Galaxy S6. That's and right. And uh, Exynos 7420. Which was 14 nanometer. Exactly, yeah. So really, as soon as you move to 10 nanometer, you get yet another step in yeah. performance and also efficiency. And I think what we've seen is already with the um, various phones that have been launched around 14 nanometers, 16 nanometers, mm -hmm. you've seen some big step up in capabilities yeah. compared to previous 20 or 28 nanometers. And 10, 10 nanometers will really continue uh, this um, in these rapid improvements. So roughly 40 45 percent in uh, battery life savings uh. well it's always because remember when you look at a phone it's not just the um, SOC you've also got the screen you've yes. also got the radio Very true. Um, the so absolutely the camera um, and really it's all about you know delivering more performance and of course better battery life when you're delivering that great performance exactly. but until you see the production devices yeah it's always tough to give you an absolute number absolutely mm -hmm. So I reached out to Intel and um, they said that they had nothing to announce, mobile related, uh, <clears throat> for 2016 at CES. And so, you know, they haven't really refreshed their Atom mobile processor in I think roughly 22 or 23, maybe 24 months now. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a bit strange. You know, Arm continues to issue new IP to its partner ecosystem. Um, everything seems to be getting better and better, but Intel doesn't really seem to have anything comparable or, or to offer. And I think that's the great thing about the ARM ecosystem is, first of all, it's not just one chip guy, it's multiple exactly. second partners. And they're all innovating and doing great new stuff. And I think that's really important because if you're passionate about your phones like I am, it means that you've got cool new devices all the time, all the time. <laughs> especially when someone else is paying for them. That's yeah. even better. <laughs> I bet you have a lot of phones. <laughs> So I think that's the real big difference between, let's say, the Intel world and the yeah. ARM world is that you've got that sort of continuous beat yeah. and pace of innovation, which has really sort of delivered these great smartphones at no matter what price point you're looking at. Absolutely. Um, so just one last wrap up question. Mm -hmm. What do you think uh, was sort of the highlight of CS 2016 in your opinion? So in my opinion, and I'm being totally and utterly biased here, was the Mate 8. The Mate 8, yeah. The Mate 8. Yes. I, I am biased towards smartphones, so yes. yeah. But, you know, just stepping back, if you look at some of the fun things that have also been at the show, um, I really do like um, the sort of smart pet that's just so fun yeah, and really, really showing cool. where you can take an ARM controller. Yeah. I think the world's smallest uh, computer, which probably you won't even allow can video. It's like so, that's right, micro remote's so small you so can't cute. even yeah, <laughs> they can't even video it. Yeah, it's just how big is it? It's like one millimeter? Yeah, it's one millimeter, yeah. And there's just, sensors in there, there's a solar panel, there's that's right, there's energy scavenging as well. Energy harvesting. Yeah. So it's just a great proof point of where you can take arm technology. So someone could almost uh, digest that, you know, if it was uh, encapsulated in a pill and they could do that. Absolutely, the absolutely. Diseases. That's right, yeah. Well, another year. Amazing year for ARM. Congratulations on all the success. Thank you very much, and, uh, and I look forward to talking to you at MWC. Absolutely, me too, sir. All right, thanks so much. You're welcome. Dark Slack Bay here with James Roos at ARM, signing off CS 2016.